Here are today's top stories. The Philippine government welcomes a successful meeting between the United States and North Korea, a first in history. An SWS survey shows majority of Filipinos are satisfied with the current state of democracy in the country. The Department of Justice prepares to wrap up its probe on the tax evasion charges against the local franchisor of Dunkin' Donuts. And the Court of Appeals junks a petition to stop the certification of 51 types of contraceptives. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Philippine government hailed the summit between the United States and North Korea as a milestone to achieve lasting peace while highlighting its positive effects, particularly on the country. More on this from Janice Cave. Malacanang welcomed the conclusion of the summit between United States President Donald Trump and Democratic People's Republic of Korea leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore on Tuesday. Roque says the meeting between the two leaders showed that diplomacy and peaceful negotiations brought benefits worldwide. For his part, Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano says the meeting underscores the importance and value of dialogue and diplomacy. Cayetano said the government hopes that the momentum set in Singapore would result to lasting peace, stability, and security. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana says the U.S.-Korea summit will also benefit the Philippines as it may lead to the end of tensions in the Korean Peninsula. He says this will also prevent hostilities between the U.S. and China, both of which have bilateral ties with the Philippines. During the U.S. DPRK summit, Trump and Kim had an in-depth and sincere exchange of opinions on the establishment of new relations and the building of a lasting and robust peace regime on the Korean Peninsula. Trump committed to provide security guarantees to the DPRK. Reaffirming the April 27 Panmunjom Declaration, Kim, for his part, committed to work towards the complete denuclearization of Korean Peninsula. Among others, the two states also committed to the recovery of the remains of the prisoners of war during the 1950-1953 Korean War, including the immediate repatriation of those already identified. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Majority of Filipinos are satisfied with the democracy in the country, according to a social weather station survey released on Independence Day. Data from the survey showed that 78% of adult Filipinos are satisfied with the way democracy works in the country. It also showed that 60% of Filipinos prefer democracy over any other kind of government compared to the 19% preferring the authoritarian government under certain circumstances. Meanwhile, 21% of respondents believe it does not matter whether the country has a democratic or a non-democratic regime. During the commemoration of Independence Day at the Aguinaldo Shrine in Kawit, Cavite, President Rodrigo Duterte's speech was marred by protesters. Duterte continued his speech, noting that the Constitution guarantees freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, and free expression. Police, however, detained one of the protesters who will be charged with disturbance of peace. All of his companions escaped. President Rodrigo Duterte has expressed willingness to walk the extra mile to achieve peace in the land by continuously reaching out to the enemies of the state. The president made this promise as he led the nation in celebrating its 120th Independence Day from Spanish rule. Duterte first expressed his intention for peace in front of the crowd at the Aguinaldo Shrine in Kawit, Cavite. Duterte then went to Pampanga for the oath-taking of the newly elected village leaders in Region 3, where he assured local leaders of his willingness to talk peace with the communist and Moro rebels. Duterte repeated his invitation to Communist Party of the Philippines founding leader Jose Maria Sison to come home and talk peace within 60 days. He said he is also building peace with Moro rebels, particularly with Moro Islamic Liberation Front Chairman al Haj Murad Ebrahim and Moro National Liberation Front Founding Chair Nur Miswari. He is hoping that the Senate and the House of Representatives will pass the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Duterte also vowed to pursue his fight against corruption and illegal drugs, as well as criminality and terrorism. 
The inclement weather due to Typhoon Domeng has so far affected 22 families or some 93 individuals in San Fernando, Pampanga. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRRMC reports that the affected families have sought shelter with their relatives. Deaths remained at one with the drowning of resort employee Algemon Dalisam Nunez in Barangay Corong Corong, El Nido, Palawan. 16 houses in San Fernando, Pampanga were damaged by Doming, six of which were destroyed while 10 were partially damaged. Meanwhile, a total of 87 municipalities and cities in the National Capital Region, Calabarzon, Mimaropa, and Eastern Visayas were also forced to suspend classes on Monday due to the southwest monsoon enhanced by Doming. The Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, is allotting 3,000 scholarship slots for members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and the Moro National Liberation Front. TESDA Duty Director General Alwin Feliciano says the move aims to help uplift the lives of members of the MILF and the MNLF by providing them free training and assessment. Those who will avail of the scholarship can choose from such courses such as agriculture, construction, tourism, semiconductor, electronics, furniture and fixtures, garment and textiles, health and social services. These courses can be taken within 40 days or less. The agency eyes MILF and MNLF members from Lanao del Sur, Maguindanao, Sulu, Basilan, Tawi-Tawi, and Zamboanga to benefit from this program. TESDA had also provided scholarships for communist rebel returnees. Still to come, the Department of Justice prepares to wrap up its probe into the tax evasion charges against the local franchisor of Dunkin' Donuts. Police identify two persons of interest in the killing of a priest in Nueva Ecija. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. I consider it a great honor and privilege to join you today as we commemorate the 120th anniversary of our nation's independence. Today, we remember our past filled with optimism for the future that we can proudly bequeath to the next generation of Filipinos. Indeed, the story of how our forebears fought for our sovereignty and establish a Filipino nation shall forever inspire us to cherish the freedoms that we enjoy all of us today. We may not understand each other, but at least there is a common denominator, and that is love of country. Nobody but nobody can, can ever question the pagmamahal ko sa bayan. I said I will stop graft and corruption, and, and, and I'm doing it. Talagang ginagawa ko. Sinabi ko, hitoin ninyo ang droga because drug will destroy this nation.
The Department of Justice, or DOJ, is ending its investigation on the 1.1 billion peso tax evasion case against the franchisor of Dunkin' Donuts. More of this from Miguel Hill. The Department of Justice is expected to end the preliminary investigation on the tax evasion complaint filed by the Bureau of Internal Revenue against Golden Donuts Incorporated, exclusive franchisor and licensed grantee of U.S. company Dunkin' Donuts by August. Facing tax evasion raps are officers Walter Spakowski, Miguel Prieto, Pedro Paraiso, and Jocelyn Santos for violation of Section 254 and 255 of the National Internal Revenue Code for willful attempt to evade or defeat tax and for deliberate failure to supply correct and accurate information. Assistant State Prosecutor Charlie Guhit, who is handling the preliminary investigation, disclosed this as uh, ordered the respondents to file their respective rejoinders by July 3. The BIR filed the complaint last February 23 before the DOJ, alleging the company is liable for non-payment of 1.118 billion pesos in income tax, value-added tax, and expanded withholding tax for the year 2007. With a record, the BIR said its office has issued a letter of authority to examine GDI's books and other accounting records. BIR said the result of the investigation showed altered sales invoices while other invoices do not contain GDI's income tax number. The complaint lodged against GDI is the 131st filed under the Run After Tax Evaders program under the leadership of Commissioner Cesar Dulay. GDI has denied the accusations of tax evasion saying its tax liabilities for 2007 has been settled with a BIR as of 2012. In a statement, GDI said that it has yet to receive a copy of the complaint filed. It said it appears that the complaint was filed based on an alleged 39% under declaration of sales which arose from the attribution of sales of franchises to GDI. GDI argued that all its franchisees are business entities separate from GDI and that are responsible for paying their own taxes. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III calls for closer cooperation between the Russian Federation and the ASEAN to further strengthen economic ties between the two major trade hubs. During a recent meeting with Russian Ambassador to the Philippines, Igor Kovayev, Dominguez suggested that the head of the Federal Customs Service of the Russian Federation make a tour of the countries comprising the ASEAN to start the process of establishing stronger customs ties with economies in the Asia-Pacific region. Kovayev welcomed Dominguez's suggestion as a way of boosting Russia's ties with countries in the Asia-Pacific region as he underscored Russia's interest in building a solid partnership with the Philippines. Russia and the Philippines have an existing Customs Mutual Administrative Assistance Agreement signed in 2013. The accord aims to promote cooperation between the customs agencies of the two countries to help fight transitional crimes and commercial fraud and prevent customs offenses. Customs Commissioner Isidro La Peña visited Moscow in October last year to discuss with Russian officials measures to further strengthen cooperation on customs administration concerns. Police have identified two persons of interest in the murder case of Father Richmond Nilo, who was shot dead in Zaragoza, Nueva Ecija. Police Regional Office 3 Director Amador Corpus, who was tasked to form a task force to solve Father Nilo's case, reports that they obtained CCTV footage at the scene of the crime. The footage from the Barangay Hall showed two persons riding in tandem, approaching the church and then leaving around the time Father Nilo was shot. Police are also looking into several angles that may lead to a motive in the priest's murder. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde says Father Nilo may have been involved in a land dispute or, or an argument rather related to religion. They are also looking into possibility that he was protecting a victim of molestation. Police are likewise studying a certain pattern that emerged regarding the killing of Father Nilo and other priests. The Armed Forces of the Philippines has formally activated its Joint Task Force Bicolandia in line with efforts to secure the entire Bicol region. 
AFP Public Affairs Office Chief Noel De Toyato said the move aims to integrate air, sea and land units in the area to fully secure the entire region including the offshore provinces of Masbate and Catanduanes. Joint Task Force Bicolandia will be headed by 9th Infantry Division Commander Major General Jesus Manananquil Jr. The division, supported by the Tactical Operations Group 5 and the Naval Forces Southern Luzon, will fall under this task force. The unit will be under the direct command and supervision of Southern Luzon Command Chief Lieutenant General Danilo Pamonag. Task Force Bicolandia will perform the vital task of protecting from security threats the region's economic, landscape, agricultural sector, and tourist hubs, as well as orchestrating joint operations in response to emergency situations. About 330 personnel from the Davao City Transport and Traffic Management Office will be ordered to wear body cameras. The traffic management head Dionesio Abude says the body cameras will be used to record footage of their activities and use them as evidence in case of complaints by motorists. The office allocated 200 million pesos to buy the cameras. Another 150 personnel are undergoing training and have yet to receive their own equipment. Up next, the Court of Appeal junked a petition to stop the certification of 51 types of contraceptives. The Health Department warns public to be aware of signs of depression and tendencies of suicide in their loved ones. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. Nagsagawa ng medical checkup sa internally displaced persons o IDPs ang Department of Health o DOH sa Sari Manok 10 City bilang pagsuporta sa Marawi Week of Peace. Ayon kay Dr. Siegfried Hector Razo ng DOH Region 10, ang madalas nilang nakikita ang problemang pangkalusugan sa Sari Manok 10 City ay mga respiratory infections, skin diseases at hypertension. Aniya, Inaasahan naman daw ang mga problemang ito dahil na rin sa pabago-bagong panahon sa syudad. Madalas din daw ang kontaminasyon dahil sa congestion ng lugar. Tinugunan ito ng DOH sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng mga kailangang gamot, vitamina, maintenance at mga payo uko sa pagbabago ng lifestyle. Halos isang taon nang namibigay ng tulong ang DOH sa mga IDP, kabilang dito ang serbisyong medikal, water sanitation and hygiene o wash monitoring, pamimigay ng hygiene kits, serbisyong mental at psychosocial support, at serbisyong pangnutrisyon. Pinapasanggundi din nila sa mas tamang doktor ang ibang pasyente na hindi kayang tugunan ng kanilang serbisyo. Samantala, hinikayat ni Dr. Razo ang lahat ng mga pasyente na alagaan ng kanilang kalusugan. Uh, parati lang tayong maging hopeful sa, sa government to address their concerns and then uh, yun, yung mga advices about their health, uh, parati nilang sinusunod para uh, maiwasan natin yung mga outbreak din dito sa paan. And then yun lang, seek early consult talaga sa mga paan kasi malapit naman sila sa city health office ng Marawi at saka may pagpag medical center. Bukod dito, sa pakikipag-koordinasyon sa city health office at iba pang ahensyang pangkalusugan, magpapatuloy daw ang pagbibigay ng tulong medikal sa mga IDP hanggang kailangan nila ito. Para sa bayan, Calvin Pinaco, Philippine Information Agency. The Court of Appeals has junked the motion for reconsideration 
seeking to stop the Food and Drug Administration or FDA from certifying 51 contraceptives as safe and non-abortifacient. The court explains that the petitioner Pro-Life Group Alliance for the Family Foundation Philippines or ALFI failed to exhaust administrative remedies. It says the petitioner should have filed the appeal with the Office of the President to assail the 51 resolutions of the FDA. The CA dismissed Alfie's claim that exhausting administrative remedies is not applicable because President Duterte had ordered to fully implement the reproductive health law which orders the distribution of contraceptives. It added that the Supreme Court has ruled that FDA decisions need to be appealed to the Office of the President or the Secretary of Health when applicable. The FDA issued resolutions in December last year recertifying 51 contraceptives as safe and non-abortifacient. The move effectively lifted the temporary restraining order issued by the Supreme Court in 2015, which nullified their certification due to failure to observe and comply with due process. The Philippine National Police seeks to stop the practice of presenting suspects before the media out of respect for human rights. PNP spokesman Benigno Durana gave the explanation as top police officials ordered police stations to stop presenting suspects. Durana says the order is based on an earlier memorandum issued by the National Police Commission effective 2008. Durana, however, denied that there are complaints about the practice. All police stations are expected to follow directive immediately. Serbia has taken its third gold medal finish after beating Netherlands in the men's final of the FIBA 3x3 World Cup. Dusan Bulut helped the Serbians survive a slow start, worsened foul trouble to defeat Netherlands for the second time, 16-13. Bulut led Serbia with seven points, while Jesper Jobse spearheaded Netherlands' early lead with six. Meanwhile, Slovenia earned the bronze medal after beating Poland 21-16. With cases of suicide now on the rise, the Department of Health calls on those in need to call its dedicated hotline for mental illnesses. People are also urged to be aware of warning signs that a loved one may commit suicide. More on this from Maricor Zapata. Knowing the signs may be the key to save a loved one from committing suicide. Health Undersecretary Hermine Hildo Valle says family members must be aware at all times if their loved one is prone to such act. He says withdrawal from usual activity, choosing to isolate themselves and showing lack of interest are among the signs. Valle says family members must not leave their depressed kin in such condition. Instead, let them feel their presence. He says showing empathy or simply listening and avoiding to be judgmental are vital in preventing someone from taking his or her own life. The health official also cites another of reasons why people get depressed. Feeling of failure, family troubles, and unmet expectations are some of these. However, Valia says there are times depression are also linked to chemical imbalance in the brain. Valia says the Department of Health is ready to give professional help any time to those experiencing depression. To get help, just give it a ring through its so-called hope lines. For landlines, dial 804-4673. For mobile, it's 0917-558-4673 and 2919 for toll-free calls. The mobile hotline was put up by the DOH together with the World Health Organization Globe Telecom, and the Natasha Goldborn Foundation. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. As the city of Marawi slowly recovers, over 14,000 students in primary and secondary schools go back to their classrooms. More on this from Sweet Lukman. Over 14,000 students are currently enrolled in more than 30 primary and secondary public schools in the city of Marawi for the school year 2018-2019. More than a year after the onset of the siege, they are once again reunited with friends and their schools to begin a year of learning. Teachers welcomed learners to their classrooms which were prepared beforehand through the Department of Education's programs, Brigada Escuela and Oplan Balik Escuela. Several parents accompanied their children to school. 
Some even watched through classroom windows. While displaced, they had the choice to enroll their children to nearby schools to where they were temporarily residing or briefly stop their schooling. As Lima Malik, mother of three kids studying in Saduk Central Elementary School or SCES, along with other parents expressed their relief and joy about the reopening of schools in Marawi. Assistant Principal of SCES, Sainola Salem, recalls going house to house to convince parents to enroll their children to their school. Ah, oo, nag house to house kami. Oo, itong mga bahay dito talang pinuntahan namin. Pero there are some na hindi namin mapilit because they have the option naman to enroll to other school, either private or uh, other public elementary school. As of now, they have 339 kinder and elementary students from different barangays. According to Salem, SCES has been a catchment school because two other nearby schools, Romoros Elementary School and Natangkopan Elementary School, were closed. This is in adherence to Dep and Order Number 40, which requires public schools to be at least a kilometer apart. With the goal of providing better services to the learners, the public school teachers remain true to their mandate. DepEd is confident that education won't be hindered as assistance from the government and private partners continue to pour in to address the needs of the learners in the recovering city. Together with Paul Soriano, for PNA Newsroom, Sweet Lukman, Philippine Information Agency. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's top stories. The Philippine government welcomes the successful meeting between the United States and North Korea, a first in history. An SWS survey shows majority of Filipinos are satisfied with the current state of democracy in the country. The Department of Justice prepares to wrap up its probe on the tax evasion charges against the local franchisor of Dunkin' Donuts. And the Court of Appeals junked a petition to stop the certification of 51 types of contraceptives. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And remember, the life we are given is neither good nor bad. It is what we make of it. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I'm William Theo. Good day.